Hello everyone. We are going to solve all the problems from NCRT exercise 2.1 in this particular video. Okay. So you can see on your screen that we have a question number one, right? So question number one says that if x plus 3 by 1 and y minus 2 by 3 is equals to 5 by 3 comma 1 by 3, find the value of x and y. So clearly, basically what they are doing is they are equating two different ordered pairs, right? So two different ordered pairs if we equate, so that means the very first element that is x by 3 plus 1 is will be equals to 5 by 3 and the very second element which is y minus 2 by 3 should be equals to 1 by 3, right? Now we will solve these two equations to get the value of x and y quickly. So x by 3 equals to 5 by 3 minus 1. So x by 3 will be equals to 2 by 3. So 3, 3 cancel x is coming out as 2. All right. And what about y? Similarly, y is equals to 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3. So y from here is clearly 1. Okay. So 2 and 1 are the final, final answers. So very easy question, first question. Okay. Now let us move on to the next problem. If the set A has three elements and set B is having, okay, set B is actually given, which is also having three elements, by the way. Then find the number of elements in A cross B. Okay. So we know that uh, number of elements of A cross B. That means cardinality of A cross B is nothing but cardinality of A. Multiply cardinality of B. Clearly in the question they have given that cardinality of A is 3. And cardinality of B we can calculate. Number of elements of B is what? Tell me 3 only. So 3 and 3. If we put the values over here 3 multiply 3. So 9, so there will be 9 elements will be there in A cross B set. Okay, so this will be your final answer. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy again. Okay, all right. Now moving on to the next problem, which is problem number 3. If G is 7,8 and H is 5,4,2, then G cross H is what we need to calculate and H cross G. So basically, this is a Cartesian product, right? So if G is uh, if G is seven comma eight, correct, and H is five comma four comma two, correct. Okay. So first of all, let's focus on G cross H, right? G cross H will be having uh, how many elements? First of all, G cross H will be having. So this is this is having two elements, right? This is having two elements. This is three. So total six ordered pairs will be sitting inside G cross S. Okay, G cross H. So first ordered pair will be seven comma five, then seven comma four, then seven comma two. So basically, in G cross H, the first element of every ordered pair will come from set G. So either it will be seven or it will be eight. So seven and the second element will come from H. So seven comma five. Next. 7 comma 4 next 7 comma 2 next 8 comma 5 8 comma 8 comma 4 and 8 comma 2 okay all right so this will be six elements in g cross h similarly if we talk about h cross g h cross g so h cross g will be having Again, six ordered pair, but this time the first element will come from H. So first element will be five, second will be seven, comma five, comma seven, five, comma eight, then five, comma sorry, four, comma seven, four, comma eight, correct, then two, comma seven, and two, comma eight bracket close. So, this is your H cross G. So, question number 3 also done nicely. Okay. Now, let us move on to question number 4 which is a big, big paragraph. State whether each of the following statements are true or false. If the statement is false, rewrite the given statement correctly. Okay. So, first statement if I just uh, understand, if I just read P is having M comma N. Okay. P is having two elements. P is a set which is having M comma N. Okay. Perfect. 
q is n comma m okay no issues then p cross q is what so p cross q let us calculate by um, ourselves and then decide whether it is matching with this or not so p cross q will have ordered pairs how many ordered pairs 2 multiply 2 that is 4 ordered pairs wherein first element will come from set p so m comma this n and m comma n m comma n m comma m correct second uh, now again ordered pair now first element will again come from n from p so this is n comma n and finally n comma m so one two three four right so p cross q statement one is absolutely false so this is coming out as false and uh, correct also we have corrected also so statement one is called the correct version already written in front of you second statement okay mm -hmm. okay second statement if a and b are non-empty sets okay then a cross b is a non-empty set of ordered pairs x comma y such that x belongs to a and y belongs to i guess this statement looks true this is true if it is true then obviously we don't need to write the correct one okay third if a is 1 comma 2 b is 3 comma 4 then a cross b intersection phi okay okay so first of all third statement may if you look at here intersection of b with null set intersection of any set with null set is going to be null now we need to uh, have the cartesian product of a cross null okay so a cross null will be null only right because the second set is actually an empty set there is no nothing there the cartesian product may if you have to write the ordered pairs what will be your second element of the ordered pair nothing right so that's why this is also true okay so i guess fourth question also three parts but again easy all right then we are having fifth question if a is minus 1 comma minus 1 find a cross a cross a now this is something that like we need to understand understand that first of all why not just do it a cross a okay and then talk about it so a cross a so a cross a will be having ordered pairs right first element coming from a second also coming from a okay so basically four elements will be there right so 1 comma minus 1 and 1 comma 1 correct four elements will be there in a cross a and now a cross a is there set now this is let's say let let us assume this is another set any set b and uh, so b set is here correct b set is having four elements if you say and a set clearly is minus 1 comma 1 which is having two elements so a is having two elements a is having two elements correct b is having how many four elements four ordered pairs four elements ordered pairs will act as elements only now a cross b is what you're looking for this is a cross b only right a cross a cross a is a cross b so cardinality of a cross b is nothing but cardinality of a cardinality of b so four to the eight elements will be there okay so we need to be very careful eight elements mm -hmm. okay so now a cross a cross a that is a cross b directly will be having eight elements where first element will come from a second will be from a cross a okay mm -hmm. okay 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 we are actually doing some mistake over here let me just go back no 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 this is now this is not how it is done sorry because no a cross a cross a will be having ordered triplets okay Achha. a cross a cross a will be having ordered triplets so in one go we might be able to like yeah my bad my bad yeah a cross a cross a directly so a cross a cross a will be having ordered triplets right so a cross a cross a will again have eight elements basically two multiply two multiply two two from set a two from another set a two from a, so basically eight elements okay 
now uh okay so minus 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 okay then minus 1 comma minus 1 comma 1 okay then minus 1 comma 1 comma 1 3 done okay where first place is fixed minus 1 now let's change 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 and 1 comma mm, minus 1 comma 1 right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 correct okay so this is minus 1 is fixed so how many elements will be there 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then yeah so 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 yes 1 1 1 will also be there okay so minus 1 ke there will be both. all minus all 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 then uh, minus 1 1 1 and one more minus 1 okay then 1 and minus 1 and that's it just tell me eight elements done eight triplets basically eight order triplets. so this is how it is done okay all right all right now sixth question on your screen if a cross b is given as a comma x a comma y b comma x b comma y okay then find a, a and b so it is very obvious if a cross b is given then the very first element now the very first element is a and b that's it so a will have a and b the first element is coming from set a so first element is we can see only two elements first element is either a or b so a cross a comma b now similarly second is either x or y either x or y so x comma y right clear perfect all right now let us move on to the question number seven all right Question number 7 says let A is 1 comma 2, okay. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. C is 5 comma 6 and D is also, okay, 4 sets. A, B, C, D, all the sets are given, right. And we are looking for verification of statement number 1. So Statement number 1 says A cross B intersection C. A cross B should be equal to A cross B intersection A cross C. Let's see, let's see. So first may let's talk about the LHS part. LHS may let's talk about the B intersection C part. Now B intersection C, this is your B, this is your C, correct? The intersection of B and C is null, okay? So now A multiply, A Cartesian product with null will be null. LHS is coming out as null. What about RHS? A cross B intersection A cross C. So A cross B, let us just form A cross B quickly. A cross B. So, this is your A, this is your B, right? So, A cross B will having ordered pairs. How many? 8 ordered pairs. 1 comma 1, then 1 comma 2, then 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, then 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 3, 2 comma 4, correct? Okay. This is A cross B. Similarly, A cross C. Tell me, tell me. So, ma'am, A cross C will be 1 comma 2 and 5 comma so 1 comma 5 and uh, 1 comma 6 2 comma 5 2 comma 6 and that's absolutely right because we are having four elements a cross b a cross c now intersection of can you see the rhs is showing intersection of a cross b and a cross c and we can clearly see that there is no term which is common in both a cross b and a cross c so that's why RHS, that is A cross B, intersection A cross C is coming out as null. So that's why hence verified. So first is verified. So hence verified. Hence verified. Second, second, second part is still there. A cross C is subset of B cross D. So A cross C, see, can you see I have already calculated for the previous part. We can just copy it right away. 1 comma 5, 1 comma 6, 2 comma 5. And 2 comma 6. Correct. A cross. Now B cross D. Correct. B cross D. So B cross D is. So this is your B. And this is your D. 5, 6, uh, 7, 8. All right. 
ओके सो बी क्रॉस डी नाउ बी क्रॉस डी में वन कॉमा फाइव वन कॉमा सिक्स वन कॉमा सेवन वन कॉमा एट करेक्ट दिस इज बी क्रॉस डी का दिस इज वन एंड फाइव सिक्स सेवन नाउ अगेन टू कॉमा फाइव टू कॉमा सिक्स टू कॉमा सेवन टू कॉमा एट एंड सेम गोज थ्री कॉमा फाइव थ्री कॉमा सिक्स थ्री कॉमा सेवन थ्री कॉमा एट एंड फोर कॉमा फाइव फोर कॉमा सिक्स फोर कॉमा सेवन फोर कॉमा एट करेक्ट ऑल राइट नाउ कैन यू सी ए क्रॉस सी इज अ सबसेट ऑफ बी क्रॉस सी दैट मीन्स ए क्रॉस सी द एलिमेंट्स विच आर देर इन ए क्रॉस सी तो वन कॉमा फाइव इज इट देर इन बी क्रॉस डी यस मैम वन कॉमा सिक्स यस मैम टू कॉमा फाइव यस मैम टू कॉमा सिक्स यस मैम That means yes, a cross c is a subset of b cross d. So this is also verified. Hence, v for Vedantu verified. Okay, all right. Chal. Next question, eighth question on your screen. That a is one comma two, b is three comma four. Write a cross b. Very easy. Let us write a cross. So it is going to be one comma three, one comma four. Then we are having two comma three. Two comma four. That's it. Now, how many subsets will A cross B have? Okay. So first of all, and list them. Okay. Cardinality of A cross B is clearly four, and from here also, like the moment we look, how many ordered pairs are there? Tell me, four ordered pairs, right? So cardinality of A cross B is four. Perfect. How many subsets will A cross B have? Okay. Now subsets number of subsets of any set is 2 raised to power n n is cardinality of that set or number of elements of that set so 16 subsets okay let us list them down so okay subsets of a cross b theek hai chalo first null set that is set having zero elements then set having single element or single ordered pair to so 1 3 One comma four, two comma three, two comma four. Okay. So how many already listed? Tell me. One, two, three, four, five. Five already listed out of screen. Up to uh, subsets having two two uh, ordered pairs. So one comma three, one comma four, comma, one comma three. Two comma three, comma, one comma three, two comma four. Hold on, hold on. List is there. Then we are having one comma four and two comma three. Then we are having one comma four and two comma four. One more, one more. Hold on. Then we are having two comma three and two comma four. Two comma three, two comma four. Okay, so having two elements, correct? Now having three elements. Having three elements will be. Uh, so let's having three elements. So basically, we are having four, right? So let us skip it one by one. Or let's in one of the set sets. Let's not take one comma three. So it will be one comma four, two comma three, two comma four. In another set, let's now skip one comma four. So it is going to become one by one comma three, two comma three, two comma four. Then we are having. Uh, let's skip two comma three this time. One three, then one four, and then two four. Then we are having one three. Okay. Um. One four. This time we are skipping the last one, two comma three, and the last but not the least set having all four uh, elements. One three, one four, two three, and two four. Okay, so just tell me how many. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yes. Okay. 
All right, eighth question done nicely. Now we are having ninth question A and B be two sets. Cardinality of A is three. Cardinality of B is two. If x comma one, x comma y comma two, z comma one are in A cross B. Okay. So that means A is having three elements. Okay. If A is having three elements, then understand. If these three are in A cross B, that means x, y, and z, x comma y comma z will belongs to set A. That means three elements are figured out of set A, and that's it. It will have no other element. Why? Because it is having three elements, and we have decoded three elements. Now B. Similarly, the second one, that is one, two, and one. So one comma two will belong to set B. So set B is having one comma two. Right and set B is having two elements only, so we have decoded all. Find A and B. So A and B already done. Where X, Y, and Z are distinct elements. So already done. Oh, easy peasy lemon squeezy question. All right. The last question of two point one exercise. That is question number ten. The Cartesian product A cross A has nine elements, among which are found minus one comma zero and zero comma one. Okay. So A cross A. Is having nine elements. Understand, A cross A will be. If I just apply that formula, the cardinality of A cross A is cardinality of A into cardinality of A. So it is going to be nine. So clearly, cardinality of A whole square is nine. So cardinality of A from here I can write as three. That means A is having three elements. Okay. All right. Now A. Now A cross A. Will have uh, minus one comma zero as one of the element, and zero comma one also one of the element. That means the first element that is minus one and zero will come from A. So minus one and zero will be sitting inside A, and the last element that is second element zero and one both are in A. So zero is already written. So one is that element which is pending. So now cardinality of A is three, and all the three elements are minus one, zero, and one. ठीक है तो फाइंड द सेट ए व्हिच इज डन एंड द रिमेनिंग एलिमेंट ऑफ ए क्रॉस ए नाउ वी कैन जस्ट कैलकुलेट ना ए क्रॉस ए क्लियरली ऑल द नाइन एलिमेंट्स ओके सो दिस इज माइनस वन कॉमा माइनस वन माइनस वन कॉमा जीरो माइनस वन कॉमा वन देन वी आर हैविंग जीरो कॉमा माइनस वन जीरो कॉमा जीरो एंड जीरो कॉमा वन देन वी आर हैविंग वन कॉमा माइनस वन वन कॉमा जीरो And one comma one. That's it. We are done, right? All the nine elements are right in front of you. So question number ten is also very easy. So I guess we are done with all the ten questions of NCERT exercise two point one. All right. So now we are here to discuss all the solutions of NCERT exercise two point two relations and functions. Right. So we'll start with question number one. So in front of you, you can see the question number one. So question number one says that a is equal to one, two, three, four, and all the way up to fourteen. Define a relation r from a to a by r is equals to x comma y such that three x minus y is equals to zero. Okay. So basically, relation r is satisfying this condition, which is y equals to three x. Where x and y both belongs to set A. So what I'm, what I'll be doing is, I will be picking. So basically, what we want is all the ordered pairs which will satisfy this condition. Condition where both the elements are belonging to set A. That's it. Nothing else. Then after that, once you are like done with the relation, then you have to write domain, codomain, and range. Okay. So let's do that. First of all, let's just pick x equals to one. Let's just put x equals to one. The moment you put x equals to one. Your y will be equals to y will be equal to tell me so hold on yes y will be equal to three correct so three also both y both x should x and y should belong to set A which is happening right now first second x equals to two the moment you put two in here so y will be six x equals to three y is equals to nine x equals to four. Right, x equals to four. Y will be equal to twelve. Okay, x equals to five. Pe y will be fifteen. That we don't want because fifteen is out of the syllabus or out of set A. Right. So now we can clearly form that relation in a roster form. 
that is the ordered pair elemental form 1 comma 3 2 comma 6 3 comma 9 4 comma 12 okay mm -hmm. all right this is your relation r by the way all right write down its domain codomain and range so domain is if i talk about domain domain will be 1 2 3 and 4 okay what about codomain so codomain will be complete set a right so codomain will be all the values you which you can put so x equals to 1 can you put yes x equal to 2 you can put yes 3 4 5 6 7 and all the way up to 14 all 14 values you can plug in at the place of x but what you can say is the equation will not get satisfied that's just that doesn't matter so codomain means all possible values you can place in place of and what about range range is okay 3 6 9 and 12 so domain codomain range everything is sorted in this question let us quickly move on to the next problem which says define a relation r on set n of natural numbers by this particular relation which is y equals to x plus 5 where where they are saying x is a natural number but x is less than 4 as well so natural number less than 4 so only we have three options right x equals to 1 x equals to 2 and x equals to 3. The moment I put x equals to 1, what I get? y will be 6. 1 plus 5 is 6. From here, y will be 5 plus 2, 7. And here, y will be 5 plus 3, 8. Now, we need to write in the roster form. Roster form is very easy. This relation will be having all the ordered pairs. 1, 6, 1, 2, 7 and 3, 8. Okay. 3,8. Now write down the domain and range. So domain, you know what's the domain, right? Domain will be 1, 2, 3. Range will be 6, 7, 8. That is values of y. The second element of the ordered pair will be range 6, 7, and 8. That's it, right? Question number 2 also done nicely. Now let us quickly move on to the question number 3. Set A is 1, 2, 3, 5. Okay. Set B is 4, 6, 9. Define a relation R from A to B. So, R relation we have to define from A to B. Right? In such a way that R is having, okay, those ordered pairs whose element difference is odd. And obviously, X belongs to A and uh, Y belongs to B. Okay, right? It's R in the roster form. Okay. So, let's just uh, try doing that. Basically, x minus y should give you an odd number. Okay, let's pick x equals to 1. Okay, the moment you pick x equals to 1, alright, so 1 is there. y can be 4. Yes, minus 3 is an odd number, right? Okay, so 1 minus 4 is possible. 1 minus 6 is also possible. And 1 minus 9 is 8. This is not possible. So that means if I just start writing the odd, uh, R relation, that is 1 comma 4, because 1 minus 4 is an odd number. 1 comma 6, that's it. Now if you put x equals to 2, similarly, so 2 minus 4 will not give you an odd number. 2 minus 6 also, but 2 minus 9 will give you minus 7 as an odd number. So 2 comma 9, okay. Now x equals to 3. So 3 minus 4 perfect odd number 3 minus 6 no 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 3 minus 9 okay 3 minus 6 is also minus 3 odd number 3 minus 9 is a big no so that is 3 comma 4 and 3 comma 6 correct last 5 comma 4 yes because difference between them is 1 that is an odd number 5 comma 4 5 comma 6 yes and 5 comma 9, no, no, big no, okay. So, this is the roster form, right. What are the elements? Let us understand over here. Mm -hmm. Question number 3, right. So, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 6, 2 comma 9, 3 comma 4, 3 comma 6, 
5 comma 4 and 5 comma 6 absolutely so this question is done they have not asked uh, more to do like no domain no co-domain this time okay now let's talk about question number four a relationship between the sets p and q okay so relationship between p and between the sets p and q write this relation in set builder form and roster form okay set builder and roster so first of all roster form is easy right so let's write it in roster form r will be equals to so roster form first and then after that looking at the pattern we can only write the uh, set builder form okay 5 comma 3 6 comma 4 and 7 comma 5 perfect okay this is r then we are having okay uh, set builder form okay yeah so second part is done then first set builder form. now set builder form may you have to know the pattern right otherwise you won't be able to write clearly 5 comma 3 6 comma 4 7 comma 5 is having difference of 2 so let us just start writing the set builder form so r will be having ordered pair x comma y such that x minus y will give you the difference 2 yes and x is equals to 5 6 and 7 so this is how we can write so basically our relation our relation will be having all the ordered pairs x comma y such that x minus y is 2 so clearly 5 minus 3 is 2 6 minus 4 is uh, 2 and 7 minus 5 is 2 and where x is specifically 5 6 and 7 that's it so this is how we can write in the roster uh, and set builder both forms right next question let a is 1 2 3 4 6 let r be the relation on a defined by a comma b right okay and uh, yeah so a is this r be a relation on a that means on a means relation on a means a to a or you can say a cross a basically both the sets are a only okay now we need to understand that b should be exactly divisible by a that's the condition so let us write down in roster form first and a first part roster form then only we will be able to know the domain and arrange right yes so now if your uh, a is one just tell me two is divisible by one is that a good statement yes two divisible by one so one comma three so basically three is divisible by one so basically any number is always divisible by 1 so 1 2 3 4 uh, comma 1 then 5 comma 1 sorry 1 comma 3 no so 1 comma 4 1 comma 4 right 1 comma 5 basically the second element should be divisible by the first one okay so 1 if your first element is 1 then you can go on and write all the elements 2 3 4 5 6 as the second element because 2 is divisible by 1 right then um, 2 is divisible by 1, 3 is divisible by 1, 4 is divisible by 1, 5 is by 1, 6 by 1, yes. Okay, and now, there are there is more to it. Now, let us change. If your first element was 1, it is done. Now, second element is 2. Correct? Second element is, please do not forget to apply the comma. 2 comma. Now, 2 comma 1. So, 1 is divisible by 2, no. 2 comma 2 is possible. 2 comma 4 is also possible and 2 comma 6 is possible. Why? Because 2 is divisible by 2. 4 is divisible by 2. 6 is divisible by 2. Next. If 3 is here, then 3 comma 3. 3 divisible by 3. And 3 comma 6. 6 divisible by 3. Then 4. 4 pay 4 comma 4 only. That's it because 4 divisible by 4. And last 6 comma 6. Okay. So now domain, just tell me all the first elements right domain will be 1 2 3 and 6 these are the domain what about the range mm -hmm. range will be 2 3 4 5 6 and let's not forget 1 comma 1 will also be here right yes so 1 comma 1 right so let's not forget 1 comma 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's it. Range will be 1 also. Range is 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's it. 
five is not at all available. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just completely missed it. Five is not available. So five will not be in the range also. So the final answer of this question will be uh, domain is one, two, three and uh, four, six. Four is also there, right? In domain. Uh, one, two, three. How am I forgetting? Like, okay, one, two, three, four, six. This is your domain and the range is also one, two, three, four, six. Clear? Okay, so let's move on to the sixth question now. Determine the domain and range of the relation R defined by this. Okay, defined by this. Basically, x comma x plus 5 where x is 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 4 5 right so this is the thing the relation r will be having suppose your x is 0 so 0 comma 0 plus 5 0 comma 0 plus 5 this is first pair comma 1 comma 1 plus 5 right 2 comma 2 plus 5 then 3 comma 3 plus 5 3 comma 3 plus 5, right? Then we are having 4 comma 4 plus 5. Last 5 comma 5 plus 5. Relation R will be 0 comma 5. Then we are having 1 comma 6, 2 comma 7, 3 comma 8, 4 comma 9 and 5 comma 8. 10. This is your relation R in roster form. By the way, here we need to write the domain. The domain will obviously be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whatever which is given in the question, X belongs to 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Range. Now, range will be something which will be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Right? This is your range. Question number 6 also done. Nicely. Now we are having question number 7 which says the relation R is equal to x comma will have the ordered pairs of the form x comma x right where x is a prime number less than 10. So prime number the smallest prime number what are the prime numbers less than 10 2 3 5 7 that's it. So now relation R will be having 2 comma 2 cube comma 3 comma 3 cube comma 5 comma 5 cube comma 7 comma 7 cube so r will be having 2 comma 8 then 3 comma 27 5 comma 125 7 comma 343 let's not forget to keep the comma in between the elements or ordered pairs right question number 7 also done nicely all right now we have an eighth question it says let a is x comma y comma z b is 1 comma 2 find the number of relations from a to b right number of relations from a to b so number of relations actually do you know the formula of number of relations let me tell you if you don't know number of relations is nothing but number of relations especially from a to b a to b is equals to number of subsets Number of subsets of A cross B. And you know what? This is one formula. Now, how to calculate number of subsets? The number of subsets of A cross B is equal to 2 raised to power cardinality of A multiply cardinality of B. Right? So, basically number of relations. Now, finally, number of relations will be equal to 2 raised to power. Cardinality of A is 3. Can you see? Cardinality of B is 2. So, 3 into 2. In the power of 2, you have to write 3 into 2. 3 to the 6, 2 power 6 will be the answer. Very good question. Huh? Very good question. Good question. Your, this is important for your J-Main as well. And the ninth question. So, total 10 questions are there, right? Ninth. We are here at 9. R be a relation on Z defined by R is equals to A comma B. A comma B belongs to Z. A minus B is an integer. Find the domain and range of R. Alright. Okay. 
r be the relation on z is a minus b should be an integer right a minus b will be an integer if a and b both will be an integer right so that means a and b should be an integer so if i talk about domain and range so domain that means a right the domain will be integers all integers and range also will be all integers that's it right this is a common sense type of a problem right okay so i guess we are done with okay so this is having nine only questions let me just check yeah only nine question so domain of all 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 integers and z is denoted by all integers so i guess we are done with all the nine questions now it's time for miscellaneous exercise all right so let's uh, start solving the miscellaneous exercise of ncrt relations and function class 11th so you can clearly see the very first question all right so question 1 says that the relation is defined by fx okay so first relation is given by fx and the second relation g is defined by g of x okay so now we need to show that f is a function and g is not a function so before that let us first understand what is exactly a function right so a function is a type of a relation only a type of relation okay function is a type of relation from set a to b from mm -hmm, a to b such that every element of set a has a unique image or mapping in set b what does that mean that simply means two things okay first thing is that set a and set b are here so in this mapping diagram every element of a should have a unique image it should not happen that you have a element in set a and it is not having any image right so basically if there are multiple elements in set a na so it should have all elements should have the image so if one is left out no 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 it is not a function so this should also have an image okay in set b second is it should have an unique image what does that mean that single element which is available in set a cannot have two different images one element cannot have two different images okay so this is if this is the case this is not a function okay a big no now that we have understood the condition so let us understand f is a function right so for fx is equals to x square when x belongs to 0 to 3 correct and it is 3x when x belongs to 3 to 10 correct okay so over here clearly um if i put 0 f of 0 that is going to be 0 square f of 1 it is 1 square f of 2 2 square that is 4 f of 3 which is 9 now starting from f of 3 so clearly f of 3 so can you see here also it is a close bracket see close bracket means equality equality 3 here equality 3 here so if f of 3 we have checked here which is 9 what about here f of 3 is coming out as again 3 3 is a 9 okay so there is overlapping over here right so 3 if i talk about 3 both the definitions is giving me 9 only f of 3 is 9 from here and here both ways then f of 4 that is 12 and so on last f of 10 so clearly that uh, uh, first of all every element like if you put 0 if you put 1 if you put anything in place of x you will definitely get an image in uh, you will definitely definitely get an answer second is there is no such thing wherein like you are putting some value and you are getting two values right f of 3 was a danger zone but we have actually calculated f of 3 from both definitions and we realize that yes it is not actually giving me different values so since it is uh, satisfying the condition you can write here that uh, this function or this relation is having every element is has a unique image uh, so that's why it is a function so fx is definitely a function what about g of x okay So g of x is x square and 3x. So g of x is equals to x square and 3x. X belongs to 0 to 
and x belongs to uh, 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 okay okay 2 to 10 2 to 10 so the danger point now you know that f of g of 2 you have to calculate so g of 2 from this definition if you calculate now what will you get 2 square that is 4 g of 2 if you calculate from this definition 2 into so 3 into 2 so that is going to be 6 correct 4 and 6 so clearly 2 is having so 2 is from set a and it is having uh, two different values or two different images so that's why you can write here that um, from set a 2 is having is not having unique image basically 2 is not having a unique image which violates the condition of function it is a relation but it is not a function g of x is not at all a function okay so first question done nicely and now we are we are having on our screen the second question all right mm -hmm. so f of x is given as x square over here and uh, the question seems pretty easy we are here to calculate f of 1.1 minus f of 1 upon 1.1 minus 1 okay so 1.1 f of 1.1 so please plug in the value of uh, 1.1 in place of x so that is going to be 1.1 square minus f of 1 is 1 ka square 1.1 minus 1 will be 0 0.1 and this is going to give you 1.21 1.1 ka square is 1.21 right minus 1 upon 0 0.1 so this is 0 0.21 upon 0 0.1 i can apply a 0 over here 0 0 cancel 21 by 10 is absolutely right for this particular question 21 by 10 okay mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, or 2.1 in their terminologies because they are giving uh, point decimals answers. So, that's why 2.1 is the correct answer. Now, let us move on to, okay, so we are having third question. Okay, hold on. So question 3 is, I guess, missing over here. Let me just write it. Let me just write question number 3 right here. Yes, find the domain of the function. Question number three says find the domain of f of x is equal to x square plus 2x plus 1 upon x square minus 8x plus 12. So this is basically a rational function. A rational function in question number three is given to you. Okay, so this is question number three. Yeah, rational function is given. How to calculate the domain of a rational function? Just by looking at the denominator, yes. So, f of x. Now, you have to factorize the denominator x square plus 2x plus 1. Now, now, if you're my student, you know how to split this, okay? So, now 12 can be written as 6 and 2. 6 to the 12 and uh, 6 and 2 will give you 8 also. Basically, minus 6 and minus 2. If you add them together, you will get minus 8. If you multiply, you will get uh, 12, right? So, this is how your factorization becomes. So, clearly now denominator can never be 0. So, clearly from this it is observed that x minus 6 cannot be equal to 0 and x minus 2 cannot be equal to 0. That means x cannot be equal to 6 comma 2. So, domain of this function will be all real values. So, x belongs to all real values. You can put whatever you want to put in, in the place of x in your function. But you can't put 2 and 6 okay all right so this is the domain now let us talk about question number four find the domain and range of the real function defined by f of x equals to root of x minus one okay root of x minus one so clearly f of x is equals to root of x minus one so first of all domain always always calculate domain first and then talk about range right so now f of x is square root of x minus one now you know how are the square root functions uh, works? How does a square root function works? The expression which is inside the square root, that is x minus 1, should always be non-negative. That means greater than or equals to 0. So, x will always be greater than or equals to 1. So, this is your domain, right? And if you have to write it properly, nicely, in interval method, x belongs to 1 close to infinity. This is your domain of f. Correct. Um, now range. 
for range what you need to do is use make use of domain in domain the starting point is one the moment you put one in this fx what will you get zero right so fx will start with zero so zero and then after that it will give you positive values if you put the maximum value that is if you put the largest possible value infinity square root of infinity minus one will be al always be a large value so infinity so zero close to infinity that means your basically square root of any quantity should always be again this can never be negative so this is also non-negative okay you just have to check whether you are getting all possible positive values or not so here zero including zero all positive value i'm getting that's why this is the question number four and now we are having question number five find the domain and range of real function f defined by fx is equals to mod of x minus one okay so now mod of x minus one again domain so domain a modulus function is actually a function which is having no issues you want to put positive values do it you want to put negative values do it you want to put zero do it that means domain will have no issues unlike square root functions right so domain is all real values but what about range so range may understand the modulus value the outcome of the modulus value is always either zero or positive that means it can never be negative right it has always be non-negative so modulus function means output will be non-negative non-negative means greater than or equals to zero okay so range will be zero to infinity again because of the modulus function question number five easy peasy lemon squeezy if you know about the modulus function and now we are having another question which looks a little bit bigger but it is not that difficult there is a function which is x comma x square plus one plus x square so what is this kind like how are they writing the function so basically what they are saying is this is your x and this is your y so y is equals to f of x you write now so f of x is your y so x square upon 1 plus x square this is your f of x right be a function from r to r r into energy r to r right determine the range of f so that means you have to like determine x square upon 1 plus x square ka range okay and uh, what about domain so domain of this function will be the all, all real values although it they have not asked the domain but still i am writing this is all real values but wait now range just tell me uh fx is equals to x square plus one plus one uh, x square upon one plus x square correct so now can it be zero just tell me can it be zero just that i'm talking about three values zero positive negative can this value will be zero can i make it zero yes definitely if i put x equals to zero i will get zero right so zero is possible okay what about positive can it be positive so x square is anyway positive one plus x square is also positive x square plus one you are adding one to a squared that is positive only so positive is always possible what possible values we don't know but some positive values is always possible right negative can negative be possible not at all understand zero is possible some positive values are possible that we need to check but negative is not possible this is important point to note because x square is positive numerator is always positive denominator is also positive how can it this expression will become negative that means the range if i talk about na range just tell me range will be starting from zero to like after zero there will be positive values set of positive values what will the, the, be those positive values so understand here x square upon 1 plus x square clearly the numerator is lesser than denominator how come because we are adding 1 to the denominator if you put any number put x equals to 1 you will realize 1 upon 1 plus 1 that is 1 by 2 that is less than 1 so if put x equals to 2 then also you will realize hmm, x equals to 2 put so 1 upon 1 plus 2 ka square 4 so again less than 1 so because the because the numerator is lesser than denominator that's why uh, because whenever the numerator is lesser that means the overall fraction will become less than one overall uh, fraction will become less than one so that's why zero to one close it can never surpass one 
you will not get this expression this expression cannot be greater than 1 cannot be equal to 1 as well if you make it equal to 1 see x square upon 1 plus x square can it be equal to 1 let's check x square equals to 1 plus x square and then x square x square cancel 0 is equals to 1 not possible right so this is how this expression can be decoded question number 7 question number 7 okay let f comma g two two functions are defined f and g fx they are giving x plus 1 gx they are giving 2x minus 3 and they are asking f plus g or you can write f of x plus g of x that is going to become x plus 1 2x minus 3 so this is going to be 3x minus 2 f plus g right f of x minus g of x and now next is f minus g so they are talking about x plus 1 minus 2x minus 3 so this is going to be minus x plus 4 f of x upon g of x so this is going to be x plus 1 upon 2x minus 3 but here is a catch do not forget to write this huh? otherwise your marks will get deducted f by g is fine x plus 1 upon 2x minus 3 but the denominator is here which cannot be 0 which was not the case with this and this right so that's why f by g of x if you just want to write f of x by g of x also you can write x plus 1 upon 2x minus 3 but here x can never be equal to 3 by 2 that specific you need to specify right so i guess we are done with seventh question as well congratulations all right next question which is question number eight f is equals to 1 comma 1 2 comma 3 0 comma minus 1 and okay so basically four ordered pairs are given in function and this is a function defined from z to z that means integer to integer now the function is defined by f of x equals to ax plus b and uh, we need to determine the values of a and b okay all right so basically 1 comma 1 satisfies over here so 1 comma 1 if i satisfy i will get f of 1 equals to 1 let us use this so f of 1 is equals to a1 plus b that will become 1 so that means a plus b is coming out as 1 similarly 2 comma 3 also satisfies 2 comma 3 so f of 2 is equals to 3 correct so that means 3 is equals to 2a plus b this is your first equation this is your second equation now you can just go on and subtract second minus 1 so second minus 1 will give you 2a minus a a b minus b 0 and 3 minus 1 2 so a is coming out as 2 the moment you plug in a is equals to 2 so it is going to become b will be equal to minus 1 right b is minus 1 so a is 2 and b is coming out as minus 1 all right a is 2 and b is minus 1 hmm. so a and b so a is equals to 2 comma b is minus 1 question number 8 also done nicely right okay all right all right all right perfect yes let r be a relation from n to n defined by a comma b a comma b belongs to natural number and a is equals to b square okay so what they are talking about is they are actually trying to tell us there is a relation uh, which will have a comma b as the ordered pairs which satisfy the relation a is equals to b square where both a and b are natural numbers. now we need to check all the points point number one a comma a belongs to r for all the symbol is for all a belongs to natural number okay basically what they are saying is um for all natural number that means for a equals to one for a equals to two for a equals to three and for a equals to all the natural number for all the natural number one comma one two comma two so that means they are saying one comma one will also sit inside the uh, inside your relation 2 comma 2 should also sit 3 comma 3 should also sit let's check 
that's what we are interpreting from this statement one now let's check so a is equals to b square so this basically b square comma b is the type of relation which will sit inside r so now if your b is one right the second element is one the one square comma one will sit inside r yes then if it is two then the first element should be two square then it will sit inside the r yes so that means 2 comma 2 will not at all sit inside the r right because if this is 2 this has to be 2 square right so the statement number 1 is absolutely false okay now second second says a comma b belongs to r implies b comma a belongs to r okay so suppose uh, a comma b belongs to r this implies b comma a also belongs to r let us take an example Tell me, 4 comma 2 say belongs to R or not? Yes, because they have already told us, na, A is equals to B square. That means this A is B square. B square comma B. That means 2 square comma 2 can sit inside R. Does this imply that 2 comma 4 also implies to the R? No, not at all. Because we can see that the first element should be the square of the second element. So if it is 4 here, it should be 4. So it does not imply. So that means this is also false. Third, A comma B belongs to R and B comma C belongs to R. This implies A comma C belongs to R. Okay. So again, take the example 4 comma 2 belong. No, not 4 comma. Okay. So let's take 2. Huh, 4 comma 2 belongs to R and uh, 4 comma 16. Yes. This is better. So let us take an example that 16 comma 4. Yes, definitely ma'am. It belongs to R. 4 comma 2 also belongs to R. Does this mean that 16 comma 2? This does not imply that 16 comma 2 belongs to R. Why? Because if 2 is here, no, then it should be 2 square. 2 square is 4. Only 4 can come here. 16 cannot come here. So that's why it does not belong. Uh, this does not imply... Right, so that means this is also false. All three statements are absolutely false. Chalo. Next question on your screen. Again, we are having set A, okay, set B, and we have a function. Function is having 1, 5, 2, 9, 3, 1, 4, 5, 2, 11. Now, we need to check F is the relation from A to B. So, it is very easy to check. First part, you know. So, F is 1. 1 is connected with 5. Okay. And uh, 2 is connected to 9. Correct. 3 is connected to 1. 4 is connected to 5. 2 is connected to... Okay. 2 is already available by the way. By the way. 2 is connected to 11. Okay. So, clearly by this mapping diagram, you know, 2 is have... 2 having how many uh, images two images in set b correct what are these that are 9 and 11 clearly it is not allowed right so this implies that f is not a function okay second part ka the answer for the second part what about the first part First part me to become a relation, there is no such criteria. So F is a relation from A to B. Yes, F is a relation from A to B. This is fine. This is having not an issue. Okay, justify because there is no such criteria to be to fit in the relation. Basically, the criteria is just that key ordered pair should be there. Okay, so ordered pairs are already there. This is my justification. And uh, here justification given not a function okay 10th question done 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 now 11th question okay f be the subset of z cross z okay defined by a b comma a plus b a b both belongs to integers is Achha. f will have ordered pairs like a comma so a b comma a plus b right this f will be having these orders so, we need to just hit and try. 
Suppose A is 2 and B is 6. Then what will happen? Just tell me. So, um, 6 to the 12 comma 8 will belong to my relation F or function F. Yes. And A is 2 because both are integers. Condition satisfies. Case number 1. Case number 2. What if I take minus 2 and minus 6? Then what will happen? Then the first element 6 to the 12 minus minus plus the 12 comma minus 8 should also belongs to f. What does that mean? That simply means that if I just draw the mapping diagram that uh, if the set A is having 12 then set B will have 8. So these two are paired up. 12 is having image 8. Minus 12 is okay. So plus 12. Sorry. sorry. Minus 12 is on no? 12 is also having minus 8 as an image. That means 12 is having two images at the same time. Two images. That means this is a big red flag. Big no. Okay. So not a function. Because it is not allowed. Every element should have unique image. It cannot have two different images. Okay. And the last question from miscellaneous. Set A is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And let F is A to N be defined by F of N, the highest prime factor of N. Find the range of, of F. Okay. Very good question. What they are saying is A to N. So, this is A. That means the domain will be so F of 9, F of 10. Correct? F of 11, F of 12 and F of 13. So, f of n, the definition of the function is this. The highest prime factor of n. So, f of 9 will be highest prime factor of 9. Now, highest prime factor of 9. Just tell me. Uh, prime factors before 9 are what? Tell me. 2, 3, 5 and 7. That's it. Now, prime factor of 9 is clearly 3. Because 5 and 7 are not the factor of 9. 3 is the answer. F of, F of 9 is 3. Similarly, 10, the prime factor out of 2, 3, 5, 7, 5 is the highest prime factor. Or 11. 11. 11 is the highest prime factor. 11 itself is a prime number. 12 ke liye, so we are having 2 again, 3, 5, 7 and 11. Right? So 12 ke liye, 5, 7, 11 are not factors. 3 only. Right? And F of 13 will be 13 because 13 itself is a prime number. And now, 9, 10, 11. Mapping diagram. No, mapping diagram say there is a lot of clarity. 9 ka we have 3. Then 10 ka we have 5. 11 ka we have 11. 12 ka we have 3. Achha. 13 ka we have 13. Achha. By the way, okay, no issue. So this is mapping diagram. It's just not at all required because this time they have not asked us to whether check about the function or not a function. They are simply asking range of f. So, range of f is what? Range of f is 3, 5, 11, 3, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 elements in range of f. So, with this question, we are done with the complete chapter Relations and Functions Class 11 till the miscellaneous series. I hope you have enjoyed this session. And now, I'll be taking your leave and I'll be seeing you in the next chapter, upcoming chapter. Okay, bye-bye. See you.